Welcome to my course on Hadoop security. I'd like to say a few things about the course before we proceed. The course is a full introduction to Hadoop security, drawing on my expertise as well as that of my colleagues and existing documentation. In the course, you're going to see very few slide-oriented lessons like this one. It is obsessively hands-on in nature, focusing on step-by-step -step setup of Hadoop security features and functions, sometimes at the expense of theoretical concepts or lectures and discussions about what's going on in the back end. There's plenty of documentation on Hadoop security, including an excellent book from O'Reilly written by my friends Ben Spivey and Joey Echeverria. Not a whole lot of end-to-end, -end, step by step application of that documentation towards an example. And that's what I'm trying to accomplish here. As such, the course is geared primarily towards the Hadoop administrator concerned with security but it contains a nod to developers in one chapter. I think the course is appropriate for both developers and administrators because Hadoop in and of itself is DevOps in its nature. It requires skills of both an administrative and of a developer nature. There is so much variation in environments and configurations, and so much of Hadoop security depends on your specific environment and its restrictions and requirements. The goal of this course is just to give you an introductory overview of the factors that go into securing a Hadoop deployment, while also offering hands-on experience so that you will have done some of this before. As such, we work to just secure a cluster deployed in Amazon Web Services using Cloudera Director in this course. A production environment will invariably differ or vary from what we do here, but the experience you gain and the steps you follow should give you some familiarity with the factors that go into securing Hadoop. I selected Cloudera for exclusive use in this course for a few reasons. First, it's my experience with Hadoop. I've been at Cloudera for five years, and my experience with Hadoop is exclusively with Cloudera's distribution and product line. It's what I know. I'm biased towards it but it's also the most widely adopted and deployed commercial Hadoop distribution. Secondly, Cloudera's distribution is complete and thorough. It includes Apache Hadoop HDFS, MapReduce, Spark, Hive, Impala, and so on. Other distributions will approach security slightly differently. For example, Hortonworks will include Apache Knox for host isolation and development standardization, as well as Apache Ranger instead of Apache Sentry for authorization. However, this course will serve as a foundation and the experience you get understanding and securing Cloudera's distribution will be translatable to the other distributions. Lastly, Cloudera provides excellent tooling for our purposes. What I'm trying to do here is a chunk of videos, all 10 minutes in size, that will give you a bite-sized lesson. And from Cloudera Director to spin up a cluster in the cloud, to Cloudera Manager for service configuration, those tools lend itself really well to the short video format of this course. You're able to spin up and secure a cluster quickly while building your own Hadoop reference environment that you'll be able to rely on and refer to in later exercises. First, we use the Amazon EC2 console wizard on your local host to spin up a cluster in the cloud. Then we launch a launcher instance. So here I have an image of a Linux host Really, all I care about is that this is a command line host. You should be familiar with the Unix command line shell. I use a Mac and I just use the terminal as my Linux host to perform some of the script-based operations, copying files up to the cluster and running remote shell scripts, SSH, and so on. Then we launch a cluster in the cloud using Cloudera Director. On the left, you have you, the student, using your command shell host, and you have your cluster in the cloud that you've launched we launch five worker node Hadoop clusters with a master, Cloudera manager, and a launcher node using Cloudera Director. Creating this cluster is about a 20 minute operation once you get it down pat. So we have a lesson on it, and then you run through that lesson. You learn how to do it very quickly, and then you turn the key. 20 minutes later, you can come down and do another lesson. You'll also see on the lower left a reference to my sample data file. We use UFO sightings data in this course as a sample data file for when we want to work on data sets. I like the UFO sightings data because it's not something that we've ever worked with before. It's not an example you're going to see a lot of in the existing documentation, and it's just kind of fun to play with. 
We first enable Kerberos authentication using either the MIT KDC or Active Directory. This is a quick method of allowing users to prove their identity. Hadoop standardizes on Kerberos for authentication. Not only do the end users, user1, user2, admin, and Bob, in the case of this course, need Kerberos principles defined in the key distribution center, but the various processes that run on all the different nodes in the cluster need Kerberos principles as well. Cloudera Manager automates all of this, and in the course, we put the MIT KDC on the same node that we work with Cloudera Manager, and this is a great first step in introducing you to Kerberos. Active Directory is also a Kerberos KDC, and Hadoop supports it, and it's really easy to set up with Cloudera. What I'm showing here is the establishment of a gateway node for host isolation, so all of your end users can access the cluster through this gateway node. You can run client applications such as Beeline for SQL operations, shell commands on the gateway node, or Hue, and then you can use Active Directory as your KDC. This more closely approximates something you're going to see in a corporate environment where Active Directory is playing the role of the user management system and Cloudera or your Hadoop environment is tied into there. So we enable Kerberos authentication using Active Directory, and it's a very common approach. You can also integrate Active Directory directly with Hue, Hive, and Impala. In the course, we also talk about authorization. We use the UFO sightings data and we derive numerous tables from that. So we take a raw CSV file, we load it into HDFS, we create a sightings table on top of that to basically query it in SQL. Then we create a version of that table that's backed by Parquet for optimal interactive performance. And then we derive different versions of that table, one with a limited projection based on columns and then with another limited projection based on rows. This is a very typical data flow that you'll see in a Hadoop environment, and we provide different end users different levels of access to the derived tables. We also do HDFS Sentry Sync in this exercise, which will expose the same policies that we define in Sentry on these tables as file system permissions so organizations who are working outside of SQL can still benefit from the policies defined in Sentry. We also discuss encryption a fair bit. We enable HDFS encryption at rest using encryption zones, and we also use SSL. We set up a self-signed root certificate authority and walk through some of the nuances of setting up SSL in the Hadoop environment. So in the last slide, we showed HDFS encryption at rest, basically depicting data from the data node process that's writing to HDFS being encrypted on disk. And here we're showing encryption over the network using SSL. We also throw in a slew of admin topics, things like organizing your cluster for host isolation, providing a single gateway for end users to access. This allows for a single point to apply security. We discuss access control lists in the context of HBase, because HBase is a slightly different project than the rest of the Hadoop ecosystem, but it also provides its own access control. We discuss audits and how audits are handled by the different processes and how audit messages are logged and then can be reported on. We discuss how to ingest data using Scoop without referring to the password. We discuss taking Solar. Solar can be deployed on top of Hadoop for providing search on HDFS. And we discuss applying Sentry policies to Solar. We also discuss sharing an Active Directory domain with other Windows hosts. So if you have a Hadoop system that's using an Active Directory server as its KDC, how does other client applications accessing that cluster using client applications on Windows, things such as MicroStrategy or Tableau, how can they get valid Kerberos tickets from the Active Directory server? Turns out it happens automatically, and I walk you through an example of how that works. We also touch on developer topics. I get a lot of questions on how developers need to be aware of secure environments when working in Hadoop. This area is not terribly well documented, so I think I'm doing some things in here that are not really done anywhere else. Take a look at the user group information API lesson that I offer here, as well as the discussion on delegation tokens and secure impersonation. I round this out by covering some other topics. Hadoop is a fast-moving ecosystem and a fast-moving market. There's also a variety of different 
initiatives in security specifically that are underway and fast moving. So we talk about the Hadoop security market, the different vendors that are in the space and the kind of services they offer. We talk about the record service. This is a beta initiative that's going on in the Apache community that's offered by Cloudera. We talk about key management. And then we also talk about the cheats that are discussed in this class. And by cheats, it's kind of interesting. We always make trade-offs between being able to get you the hands-on experience that we want out of this course and maintaining something that's truly secure. And every time we cut corners in terms of time, we also cut corners with security. So I tried to enumerate what those cheats are that we make so that I don't inadvertently discuss something that looks like a Hadoop security best practice when really it's just an item of convenience for this course. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy the course. I've had a great time building it for you. And I think it'll give you a great introduction to the space of Hadoop security.